All righty. Good morning. Good Happy morning. New Year, Janice. Thank you. Same All you right. Think. Happy New Year, you guys. All righty. Well, it's Kate Richberg and Janice Parsons live from beadshop.com. Yep. Yep. Oh, my gosh. You know, every time we do one of these broadcasts, you guys, I think in my head, I go, we can't possibly pull it off yet again. <laughs> and yet again. Here we are. Well, let's hope we pull it off. <laughs> I'm always the pessimist. No, I, I know. You know, so you're always confident. But we've got this. We're so going to pull this off. Yeah, yeah. we always yeah. we always do. We right. always do. So, you guys, we have a great, oh, my gosh, we have such a great uh, demo and show for you today. Um, we're going to be making malas. I know. And I we're going to be malas. doing, I'm sliding in a little bit of wire wrapping mm. for our malas as well. Because, as we all know, Wire is, is the, the backbone, backbone of story <laughs> making. Yes, yes. Not um, Christine says good afternoon and happy new year. Yes, Thank hello, you, Christine. How are you? Welcome. We've got thirty viewers already. Wow. Great. Well, welcome. Happy New Year, you guys. You know the cool thing. You know we've got we received so many great messages from you guys um, from our last um, broadcast. We really had a great time sharing that new Odyssey. Yes. project with you yeah, and you guys loved the kit which we love that you loved the kit which was awesome um we still have a few of those available if you bought us out of wax linen. yeah the Just wax linen gone. was gone we're getting yeah. it back in it's coming in soon i think it's in today actually is it yeah. oh great so you'll see that um today you guys um with our mala project we actually didn't make a kit for you but we do have on the Facebook page, the Facebook Live Landing page, we've got all the ingredients listed. And I think one of the reasons we did that was because the malas are kind of a personal, mm -hmm. um, kind of a personal choice, they I are. think. And they the beads are. that were personal are kind of personal choices. So um, let's talk a little bit. Um, I know that malas and, and things were something that we we had experience with way back in the days yes. of the bead shop days. So what moved you, Janice, to do this project? Well, when I had the shop, Kate, I used to do a lot of repairs. I remember. Um, and on occasion, at the beginning, I'd get a mala maybe once every three or four months, mm -hmm. someone would come in with a mala. And they never wanted to be parted with it for very long. Right, because it was their part of their daily routine. So they would wait. They this, Maybe it was someone who came in and I wasn't there, so they would wait until I was there. Then they would go over it with me. They would tell me their story. Maybe at the time, this was oh, up to almost 40 years mm -hmm. ago, they, they might have been blessed by the Dalai mm -hmm. Lama. Mm -hmm. They might have uh, gotten them on a trek to... Tibet mm -hmm. uh, and they and blessed mm -hmm. um, and they did not want to be parted with mm -hmm. them so I had to figure out very quickly how to restring them like, kind of on the fly overnight right. yeah overnight like mm -hmm. okay I'm dropping them off now at five o'clock can I pick them up tomorrow morning mm -hmm. at ten o'clock yeah um, and so malas have a history uh, my history with them mm -hmm. is that they are loved that they are used um, and uh, that they're coveted by the whoever uh, wears them. Mm -hmm. When I started just making malas, I liked making them just for the sheer beauty of they look beautiful, mm -hmm. they feel good to... To uh, play around with. To, yeah, to, yeah, to play around yeah. with. Um, the, the structure of uh, a traditional mala mm -hmm. is very much like rosary beads. Mm -hmm. Each bead is used as a station. Mm -hmm. Um, to repeat your meditation mm -hmm. or what's known as a mantra. Mm -hmm. And for those of you out there, there's lots of information on the internet about mantras, about meditation, mm -hmm. Buddhism. I am not an expert. <laughs> I'm not going to even say mm -hmm. I'm an expert. Mm -hmm. I can tell you this, that, that they're traditionally done with 108 beads. Mm -hmm. And so that um, when, the, when you start your mantra, your meditation, and I've even had mantras where I go, I, I want to relax more. I want to relax more. <laughs> you know, I mean, it can be something as simple mm -hmm. as that. And then you go to your next speed mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. each time repeating it. Mm -hmm. and so, so it helps you meditate. It's a good it, aid to meditation right. as well. And then yeah. you can also add different beads within it, which then tell you, okay, I've done it 10 times. Mm -hmm. And you go to a different beat. Okay, now I'm on my 20th mm -hmm. beat. So, but the but usually it's all 108 beads. 
You can count this bead down here, which is considered the guru bead. You can count it or not count it, um, but that's really your starting mm -hmm. point. And so that's, that's the basis. Mm -hmm. um, I always like to start the new year with a mala mm -hmm. because that's when we set our intentions. Mm -hmm. We have what are we going to accomplish right. this year. And so having a, a mala project now seems... It seems just right. Right. You know, another thing that I know, um, I actually went on a trip when I was teaching um, a while back. It was last year, and I went, um, it was Bead Fest, actually, mm -hmm. in um, Philadelphia. And I bought some malas uh -huh. from a bead vendor there, and I brought them home as gifts, just for friends. Right. You know, you go away, you like to bring right. back a gift. And they were so excited yeah. about even just receiving a mala right. like this and you know if they weren't particularly buddhist or maybe they did some meditation or maybe they had their own kind of They're chance that they did though. yeah but i think it's a kind of a cool thing to have kind of a touchstone mm -hmm. you know regardless of kind of how you use it you know you make your own right. intentions for it you have a question gracie oh sorry so we have um <laughs> a lot of clothes a lot of thank yous oh. for gifts that we got. Oh my oh, goodness, good. you're welcome. <clears throat> uh, Louise is watching from a car dealership and she has very nice service <laughs> to watch you guys. Oh, we love it. We've got a hello from LA, Lower Alabama. That's from Trish. <laughs> oh, hi Trish. Anna hi, Trish. is snowbound in Oregon. Oh, oh my gosh. That's um, right. It's Ethan says there. hello. Hi, hi New Year. Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy and, New Year. Um, Angelique right after. She's in the Netherlands. She oh, says hello. Oh, hello Angelique. Pennsylvania, Texas. Wow, Fantastic. all over. Well, thank yeah. you so Fantastic. much for joining us. And just to let you guys know, some of you may be new viewers. Um, you can find everything that we're doing, a lot of what we're doing, uh, right on our web shop, uh, website at beadshop.com. You can also see past broadcasts um, from our past Facebook Lives. We have them right on our um, website. If you click the little Facebook Live icon on the front page, you'll be whisked away to our Facebook Live page. So you'll be able to catch up on other things that we've done. Some of our broadcasts have been pretty epic. Um, we got a Switzerland right yeah, now. Yeah, in Switzerland. Oh, excellent. Wow. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. We love this international I think we beating need a community. Road trip. We do. A European right? road trip. Right, yes. where Kate and Chanis get yeah. in. We, we, we travel across the country and then right. we take the Queen Mary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, across. And we beat. Yeah. We beat in ways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things I also <coughs> wanted to mention, pardon me, <coughs> is these are also kind of akin to what I feel like are worry beads. I was just going to yeah. bring that up. Yeah. You know, if my cousin Zoe Pie, if Zoe is watching, and Zoe is a former bead shop, yes. uh, uh, bead babe, we like to call them, and now has moved on to uh, bigger and better things, or be bigger things, I don't know, not necessarily better. But Zoe, um, her grandparents, her maternal grandparents were Greek, mm -hmm. and her papu always had a strand of worry beads in, in his, his pocket, pocket. Yes. and his papu or her papu gave those worry beads to my grandpa mm -hmm. Zoe's other grandpa so it was kind of a cool thing to pass on between grandfathers and I still have those worry beads from and Zoe's papu and I'd love papu. to see them yeah, I, I should is bring there them an in. eye bead on it there is not oh but because the greek yeah. worry beads are known for having, for having an the eye ceramic bead, bead yeah. that has the, the, eye, the yeah. eye on it. Mm -hmm. Usually an eye bead is any bead that has a dot right on and it. a circle, yeah. and they were used to ward off yeah. evil spirits. They were um, considered uh, amulets uh, worn by babies mm -hmm. to keep away yeah, you know, any kind of sickness, right, yeah. or any bad things in general. Right. But well, you'd see, cool. you, yeah. and you think you still can see older people, old men in... Mm -hmm you know, countries where mm -hmm. they pull they out have their these little beads. beads. Yeah. They're often on a chain mm -hmm. or a piece of leather. I do have one loose, on a chain. Mm -hmm. And then they just go back and forth mm -hmm. with them when they're aggravated. Yeah. You know, it's a habit. Yeah. Well, my granddad used to keep it. He had an old radio, and he would used to listen to the A's oh, on okay. the radio. So I think he used his worry beads to mm. get him through those A's mm. games, I think. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was kind of cool. So I guess the point of all of this is, you guys, however you want to use your beads or however you want to set your intentions, we love it. We think right. it's great. So let's set our intentions okay. and make a mala. Okay. All right. So let's jump in. All right. You have a design here. Well, let's just go through a little <laughs> okay. bit of the history of the project. We have a project online now mm -hmm. called How to Not a Mala. Mm -hmm. And in it, we used eight millimeter beads 
um, both wood and semi-precious. We also used uh, other beads, these Chinese crystals. Some of these beads, like um, the one in the middle that I've used as the guru bead, was limited from mm -hmm. vintage finds. We still finds. have a few We have a available. few, mm -hmm. um, but it's a great handout. Yeah, because and you can see I printed it out, but the handout, whoops, that's the extra part. We've got some beads oh, coming along sure. here. But the handout is really, really super extensive. And we're cheap. We don't print it in color. We did. I printed it in black and I white. I know. I know. But it's full <laughs> well, color. I wanted to save our ink. <laughs> <laughs> and you just it, you just hit the button uh, mm -hmm. that you go to the project page. You scroll down to how to not a mala. Mm -hmm. You open that up, and then there's a button that says uh, download. download PDF, mm -hmm. and you'll get the whole. How many pages? 20? 15? I don't know. So, uh, it's uh, crazy. <coughs> I go crazy. 16. 18, 16. Okay. But in essence, we're going to uh, use the the knot that we learned for pearl knotting, and we did it a couple of mm -hmm. weeks ago. We are going to also do, at the very back, um, we're going to do, uh, I don't know if, if anyone notices here, there's no clasp, there's no end tip, and there's no like uh, button or anything. We're going to do um, an endless knot an endless so knot. that you mm -hmm. can... You can make a mala, and your knots uh, will be this will be secure. We're also going to um, focus on how do you use a, a, a guru bead, and those usually mm -hmm. you can purchase them this way. They're two parts, and the guru bead is I have that right here. Mm -hmm. It's a bead. That's the little a, bottom. That's part the of it. bottom, and this is the top. And I don't know, Grace, if you can get in close, but you can see that there's a, I hope you can see, mm -hmm. there's, there's three a hole holes. that mm -hmm. goes through this way, and it opens up to go this way. And so that what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to string this so that you can come down on both sides. Uh, we, we're not using this in the project because we're using a tassel. Mm -hmm. or this, um, little, this little semi-brush right. station. Right. So... Um, we're going to uh, come down through the guru bead. We're going to show you the bit of the macrame, which we also did last mm -hmm, week, I believe, mm -hmm. um, around a, a, a vintage, small car vintage pendant. And then, Kate, you're going to show us how I you... I am. We're going to do some wire wrapping. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I love that. Mm -hmm. um, it's very clean. And then you're wearing earrings I using am. the same technique. I don't know if you guys could... I'm going to share you some want to take one little... Off? I'll okay. share some little earring tips with you guys yeah. when I do my part on wire wrapping. But I, you know, full disclosure here, I needed some earrings to wear this morning. So I thought, what a fun way to use one of our alternate vintage finds right. carved pieces. But this is the exact same technique, only I've translated it over here to an earring. Right, right. Um, and so yeah. you have... Oh, oh, question, Gracie? Well, no, I just wanted to let you know um, that Zoe said that Leonard Cohen used Bury beads, and he lived in Greece for many years. Oh, yeah. really? And wow. um, we have a hello from Turkey. Oh, wow. hello. Yular, by the way. Hello. So hello. Lou Yular means Happy New Year. Oh, oh thank you. Happy New Year to you. Well, we have a nice Turkish co uh, connection here with mm -hmm. you, Grace. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, hello to Turkey. And <laughs> we Leonard love our Cohen. Yes. <laughs> and Leonard Cohen, may he rest. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. May he rest. Okay. Well, so, cool. So, let's, um, now that we've kind of shown, and you guys also for this on our Facebook page, the Facebook landing page for this project, there is a project map. So Karen laid out a beautiful project map and took a great photo of it. So you'll be able to see this in its entirety uh, on the Facebook landing page. That's the place for all things related to this broadcast. So you, Janice, have laid this out. Um, and it was when I first started. Counted. <laughs> yeah, counted. I don't know what I've done, done <laughs> right. with my sleeve up, up till then, but... Um, what I did is I, I counted, I have 108 beads here, um, and in, in the original handout, mm -hmm. all of the steps are included on how to knot the, the end beads. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just want you to just share for a second your little handout 
which oh, is yeah. going to be, that's mm -hmm. not in this handout. No, but there's a button to it on the Facebook landing page. Right. And you're going... And since it was smaller, I right. it out in color. Right. <laughs> But you Yours can see. Well, mine you know, I don't know. <laughs> oh. What are you What are you gonna do? Um, but here um, are all of the steps for the wire wrapping as well. So you'll be able to go right to. Uh, they're up on the Facebook landing page as we speak. Sorry, I keep getting your your I know, that's out okay. of. That's okay. So out of position. We have the only thing I don't have here is a mm -hmm. disc. I do. We'll talk about the yeah, tassels. Yeah, we've got one over there to put on over. Yes. Um, so what we. So you start with 108 beads, and I took this, we, we added rock crystal because of, you know, it's, it's uh, healing arts properties, mm -hmm. which are, it, it is known to bring clarity, mm -hmm. uh, focus, and we thought in the new year. And do you want to just say a bit about why we chose Labradorite? So the Labradorite, we chose the Labradorite because it was, we called this one, um, uh, intention. Protection. Right? Oh, protection. Sorry, I'm thinking about intentions. We called it protection because when we looked up some of the properties for the different stones, labradorite is in the mineral kingdom, is known to have the most powerful of protection uh, properties over other stones. So if we're putting everything up on a, on a grid and who's up at the top, labradorite. So right. we thought we're going to, you know, kind of cast our, our thoughts of protection mm -hmm. over all of us by using this labradorite. So labradorite plus um, the quartz crystal, right. we thought made a really good it's combination. Really, it's really pretty. Mm -hmm. So, um, so where, however you want to do your pattern with whatever beads you want to use, it's up to you, but they're 108. Um, and the only thing that you want to make sure is that uh, when you start at the beginning, you want to add on four beads that have larger holes. Larger holes, So right. if you're going to do, um, in this case, this is done all with one stone, what you want to do is you want to pick four beads that you can string on um, that you can go back through. Mm -hmm. So And I'm you just, did a little test, I did. which was really I convenient. Did. So I, I put a bead on. And then all I do is I go back through the bead just to make sure I'm using a flexible eye needle. Mm -hmm. And we're using fine weight seam. Fine one. weight, yeah. Mm -hmm. And this one I think is going to work. So you want to pick four beads. I'm just going to pull it and see if it goes on. See, that one's too tight. Mm -hmm. So that's so a no-go. That's a no-go. I happen to know that these rock crystal have large holes. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to, you can see almost... Uh, I don't know if, if, if you can see out there, but the beads, some of them have big holes and, and some, some of them have, small have holes, uh, yeah. smaller and you just have to try. But those first four beads really, uh, I, I'd like them to have big holes. So you mm -hmm. see this one went back through. So you're going to try, you're going to test four beads to make sure, and then you're going to string on your four beads. Um, which is what we did here. Yeah, so let's, uh, shall I move this one yeah, out of the way? Yeah, let's move that out of the way. <laughs> and what we're basically doing today is we're not we're kind of fast forwarding a, it. We're making yeah. like a, a uh, almost a worry beads. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we're making a like little a small wrist, wrist mullet. Right, yeah. So we have here, Let me get that out we the have way. the four beads that we that we strung on, and I, I started out by putting, I'll put it, shall I put it right here, Grace? I started out by putting a knot in the end, and I know someone is going to ask, how much thread do you need? And <laughs> the answer is enough. You need, a, you, need, <laughs> you need quite a bit. So mm -hmm. I would say for a, uh, a long mala, I know it's in the handout, but I would say about, I would start with three yards mm -hmm. of thread, and then that's going to be doubled over mm -hmm. into um, one and a half. Do you have a question? Melanie loves the bracelet you're wearing. Oh. She wants to know. We had a question last week. This too. one? Yeah. Yeah. She wants to know how to make this. <laughs> yes. Well, it's We're so funny. This regardless, in a of weeks. yes, regardless of what project we do, you guys, people always ask, ask about, about this. this bracelet. This bracelet is called it's trail called Trail Ride. It's under right? Prairie. Yeah, it's a prairie, it's under our prairie project. And so this sample is called Trail Ride. 
um, and it uses the natural leather and some of our surround Just a few sliders. pieces, That's sliders, it. and this Book of Kells. My favorite class. Clasp. I agree. It's I know. so, so cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. So <coughs> we have prairie slated I soon. Know. So I almost have to wear this every Facebook I know, Live because, because people love it. I know. Well, those are taking a break on bracelets. Can we see yours? Yeah. Oh, oh yes. you guys. This is a teaser. Yes. A very good intention teaser. So and Melanie says thank you. She will make this and love. Oh, oh good. good. You good, guys, good. look at this while we while we are on the subject of bracelets. This is something we just got as a sample. And we're going to be talking to you a little bit. It's going to, uh, later on this month, we're doing kind of a tribute to one of our bead shop bead sisters who is no longer with us, who actually, uh, Nicole, who um, was with Janice for quite a number yes. of years and who did so many really wonderful projects. And her spirit is all over beadshop.com. So, this is uh, a tribute piece to one of Nicole's project called Five Stitch. And this was done um, by one of our former staff members, Becky. Becky Tenai, uh -huh. yes. And this was her sample. And we opened it up. We got it in late yesterday and just opened it up this morning. And I grabbed it and I said I had to wear it. So this is coming up uh, towards the end of January. Janu January 25th. Mm -hmm. January 25th. We're going to do a, a tribute to her with... Mm -hmm. um, uh, Brittany Ketchum put mm -hmm. together beautiful boards from um, Nicole's Pinterest yeah. uh, pages, and uh, Becky palleted one, and Look at Brittany how did another. Is. And mm -hmm. we're going to uh, we're going to teach some of these stitches. Yeah, and, it's really um, they're really incredible, and help raise some money for um, some of the, the causes. S yeah, yes, the, for the, Wildlife the, Refuge, which. Nicole, Nicole really loved. believed yeah. in. So. so there'll be more information about that, but I just saw that this bracelet was so amazing. So while we were on bracelets, mm -hmm. thought we'd share. She, Melanie says she loves yours too. Oh. And thank you, Gita, for posting the link to Brittany. Oh, thank you, Gita. What would we do without our moderator from Denmark? So, um, so I, we start by pearl knotting, right, right, Janice? We start by pearl knotting, and I don't have any just thread with no needle on it. So I'm just going because we have all of mm -hmm. these samples. Let me just uh, throw a few beads on this. Where'd all my beads go? Oh, here they are. Do you need these? No, you could have some. Okay, beads. so. Just like, let's pretend, I'm just going, because we've taught this already, and and I'm not going to spend You've a lot of, they all are at the halfway point. Oh. There's nothing at just the very oh, right. beginning. Well. So I'm just going to, um, uh, you know what, I'm just going to take this off. Do it. We're not afraid. We're not afraid. We're fearless. Look at that. Bam. And I'm going to just put the knot in there, and... Then let's put the piece of tape where we want it, about that far down. And I'll cut these apart for you so they'll ready. Right. they're ready. Okay. And these are the ultimate and recyclables, you guys. They are. Mm -hmm. um, while I'm doing this, I just want to share with everybody, if they haven't seen it already, um, if you look at the top bar on the home page, there's a wonderful drop-down um, or link to... Um, the color collection. Mm -hmm. And in that, um, we did do a whole series on, um, Col on, on colors, mm -hmm. what they mean. So you can go, if you're going to select beads and you want to, well, I'm not sure about the healing arts, mm -hmm. uh, metaphysical, but I do believe do in like red is color. fire. Yeah. You can look up and say, okay, mm -hmm. I want to do something in red. What does red mean when mm -hmm. I mix it with blue? Mm -hmm. um, but the color collection is a great uh, resource on the website. Right. So let me put on. I'm and so you guys, while Janice is doing that, I want to show you here. I'm just cutting this little oh, sample good, away yeah. that Janice had earlier. This is something that's really important. If you need to cut away pieces that are knotted. I have a flush cutter right here. And can you see, when I cut my beads away, a flush cutter is the greatest thing to use as a knot cutter. I need to come in and wedge my flush cutter in between the knot and the bead. So when I knot, or when I clip, I cut the knot completely away. So that when I take the bead off of the thread, there's no little extra knot left on there that's going to 
make the string get caught in the holes of my beads. That's something that when people would come into the store and they would have tried to have cut their pearl necklace apart uh, previously, they would have cut on the knot like this, and it would have left a little bunch of knot there. And when you go to pull it off, the knot stuck inside the bead. And once that knot is stuck inside the bead, it's, it's, that bead yeah. is, is done. That, right. the, the life is over for that bead. So make sure when you're cutting apart your pearl necklaces or knotted beads, get that flush cutter in between the knot and the pearl itself and clip and you're good to go. Okay, so now we're going to show, just to refresh everybody, uh, you can pre-string your beads up into the three-hole bead. Mm -hmm. you, you don't want to do that because that's separate. You mm -hmm. want to curl mm -hmm. the needle. Mm -hmm. But Okay, so you're going to pre-string your beads. And the beauty of this is you can take it all with you on, on an airplane, on a trip, mm -hmm. just wrap it around something, take it off when you're sitting in the plane, and you have your whole design ready to go. Yeah, that's to go. ready to go to string. So um, my beads are not that loose, but normally I would put a piece of tape over the needles so, so that they don't fall off the right. other end. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to pull a bead up, and I just want to refresh uh, that we started with... Uh, uh, here we have five beads, um, at least three beads, three or four beads, and you don't have to start, and we're going to show you this, you don't have to start at the very back. Mm -hmm. You could have your beginning even here. Yeah, because it it's endless. It doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. um, you really won't see it. So you put some beads on um, with no holes, and I put a knot at oh, the end. Oh, with no knots. No knots. Yeah. Um, you test, you you've tested the beads that you can go back through them. Um, you put a knot on, then you put a piece of tape. The tape is going to come off, and this is going to allow us, um, when we want to go back, I'm just going to pull this off, this is going to allow us to have some thread um, to, to be able with. to go in and knot. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now I'm just going to review the knot again, mm -hmm. and then we'll, mm -hmm. uh, we won't belabor with mm -hmm. those. And you guys, you can, for the knot refresher, we've got a class handout under um, our class handouts on our project page. Go to Scale Builders and class handouts. You can also go to the Facebook page, and there's that whole Facebook broadcast on how to pearl knot. Right. So I'm going, let me put, pull this one in, and then I'll do another one. Has anyone out there been pearl knotting since our, la since our Facebook Live? show on it? Do you have any tips for anybody? <laughs> do you love it as much as we do? Okay, so you pull a bead up and you, with your non-dominant hand, you pinch under it, you wrap, you push it through, thumb on top, and I'm going to show you this. And I, I would, another little pointer is you don't want to put your fingers under. Right, you don't want to pinch it. Because what happens when I put it under? I pull the pearl or the labradorite stone bead away. So you want to make sure you're only holding it on the sides. My thumb is holding it down securely. This is one-time prayer does not help. Mm -mm. Don't pray. <laughs> oh, please. You know. Uh, and then with the fine weight sealon, it's very forgiving. You, you can just tug it right into yes. place. Yes, and I showed last time what mm -hmm. happened if you if your thread mm -hmm. breaks, which is very rare with fine weight, yeah. but it could happen with micro mm -hmm. or with silk. Mm -hmm. So, and so says oh uh huh, that she's tried and tried and with pearl knitting and she sucks at it. <laughs> oh, so Cindy. has she watched our our Facebook live on it? Yeah, I if you know. haven't watched our Facebook live yet, Cindy. Oh, uh, Sue. 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 You just, it takes some practice. You're seeing years and years of pearl knotting yes. prowess right here. Right. Okay, so this is, this is the knot. Mm -hmm. I'll do another one. Oh, wrong direction. Um, because we know people have things to do and we're not going to do three hours of Facebook Live. So. Well, right. Well, we could. <laughs> hey, that's great. Okay. Hey, good time. Good time. Okay. Pinch, <laughs> wrap, tuck it under. So you bring all the beads through. All the beads. All the beads. And I have my little triangle <laughs> here. Can you see the knot? And I'm adding pressure here and pressure here. 
then I slide my thumb up on top, fingers on the side, let go. And your finger is what's holding that knot right. in place. And then I'm going to pull it in, nice and steady. Bam. Okay. And then tighten. Tighten. So what you're going to do is you're going to string up until you hit the guru bead. So we've got right. that and we're going to show you how to put that guy on. Now that's the thing, you guys, putting on this three-hole bead. Since the three-hole bead, if you'll remember, acts like a little, it has like the three holes, so the shape is like a T. If this is the bead, there's a hole that comes out here, and then there's a hole here and here. So getting your thread to make this little jump, that's what would give our customers bits. Yes. They would just come in and go, oh my goodness, um, you know, how do, how do I do this? Here's your guru bead Oh, right thank there. you. Um, how do we do it? So this, you guys, is it's going to change your this life. This is the money shot. This is. May I have the uh, the round, round nose? nose? You certainly so, may. So you come up, you're you're stringing, uh, whatever your design is, and before this, here's the guru bead. Before we put the guru bead on, I'm going to put the knot in this last bead. Um, that just keeps the thread nice and tight. And I, I'll, I'll purl knot like multiple different ways. You know, I go backwards, I go forwards, so I'm not always doing it exactly. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's yes. just okay. It's, uh, let's. And that was loose, that knot. It was really kind of wonky. And then it's gotten tighter. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to. Uh, here's where the trick is. I've, I'm using a flexible eye needle, mm -hmm. and it's wire. It's you, a wire you can't needle. do this with an English seed bead needle no. because you can't curve it. it has to be a wire right. needle. But I'm going to take the, the round nose, and you could, if you only have chain nose, you could do it with chain I nose. I did it with chain nose. Earlier. And I am just going to curl the end a little bit. I just like the tip a little bit curled. Can okay. you lay that down so we can see the picture? Sure. Thank you. So it looks like a little handle of an umbrella. Or a candy cane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, since it's the holiday season. Season's still. greeting. I still have okay. some candy canes left so over. The, oh, you do? I do. Bring them in. Oh, all right. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to go through the side like this, and there it comes out. And see that curve? So what it does is that curved needle, it just comes in, and it, that curve of that needle just makes that joint, that 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 bend right. for you, so you're not trying to keep poking it, poking it, trying to push it down into that main hole. This took me years to figure yeah. out. Like, why couldn't <laughs> I get it? <laughs> right. Okay. Then what I like to do is I try to go through slowly with the flexible eye needle. So you if don't. you pull it really fast, it's like that curling ribbon. Curling ribbon. And, and so you, you, right. I don't like that. So here I go. I'm coming through. And look how nice that looks. The three right hole there. bead, half right. of it's on. Right, so now I'm down at the bottom. And now we're going to, we, yeah. let's show them where we're going yeah. with this. So you have some options. This is the bottom of the guru right. bead, the, the, the original guru bead. So right. what you could do is you could slide this guru bead on. You could get mm -hmm. a small little seed bead or something and then come back up mm -hmm. and pass it through that way. What we've done in the design, though, instead of using this guy, we've put, we've done a little macrame. We've done a little macrame, because a little macrame is good for the soul, right? So, and then we also want to connect to a centerpiece, a, a centerpiece, point. right. So instead of the guru bead would have been down here, right, the bottom of it. This is where we curled, we came in. Mm -hmm. Next, we're going to macrame, to do a little macrame length. And then anything could be hung from that. We used um, this little wire wrapped, one of these are carved vintage vines. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, what I don't like, Kate, is mm -hmm. when I use this bead and I want to use a tassel, I have yet to figure out a way that the tassel will hang correctly. Right. So it, it looks. It goes off right. to the side. It so ends here's, up. Right. So it looks a little. Um, it, well, here. It looks here's, a little skewed. Here's this, and mm -hmm. then I want. I try to come down, put the tassel on, and try to go back up. And the tassel always looks. And skewed. the tassel. I, I've tried. I've tried it. I. I 
I can't. So if I want to do this, I find that it's better to use a bead with a large hole mm -hmm. and the guru bead and skip this. That little cone part. Your little, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the cone part is good if you're going to do like a stretchy bracelet, bring your ends through, and not tie your mm -hmm. elastic underneath mm -hmm. and just let it be. Mm -hmm. Then that's fine. Mm -hmm. Then it works great. Okay. So now we're down we're down here and we want to show you we could, we were prepared and we are it's so amazing. So what we have here now is um, and we've shown you how to macrame. We've cut a separate piece of uh, fine weight Ceylon and just started macrameing um, right here. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can on, see the thread comes yeah. out. And we've just macrameed a little bit. Macrameed over it. Mm -hmm. And um, it, this is just the, the square knot, the mm -hmm. right over left, mm -hmm. left over right. Um, and then we get to this point. And what I'd like you to do is make sure, and we measured that this is long we enough. We mm -hmm. had to take it off a couple of times. We undid it. Um, we And you're going to show them the mm -hmm. wire wrapping yeah, I'm in a show minute. You that but we went through... And just to make sure that to, there was yeah. enough macrame to go all the way around so it wasn't too tight. Remember, we all of our things always need air. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't too tight. Had right, a little or bit too of loose. movement or too exactly. loose. So you bring it around. And you just mock it up there. And you go like this. And that's just just mm -hmm. about the right size. Mm -hmm. It may, it, I don't think it even needs another one, but that'll, that'll be really nice. Mm -hmm. Can you see that, Grace? Okay, so that's what we would, that's what we do now. We've got, we, we attached it when we were doing the macrame. We did have it attached to the board so that it's easy to do the macrame. Mm -hmm. uh, someone emailed me, uh, was going to teach uh, some school students and wanted to know could she use a shoe box cover. Yeah, like a shoe, like a lid. A anything lid with sides. Anything, anything mm -hmm. with sides. So if, if all you're going to do is this little section of macrame and you don't have a design board, you could do it with a shoe box, you could do it with a baking pan. Mm -hmm. a tray, but you're anything. just going to mm -hmm. adhere it to both ends with clips and then have your new cord mm -hmm. make that. So And that's all under, we have a skill builder under how to macrame. We right. also uh, for in last week's Facebook Live, we did a lot of macrame on the Odyssey project, yes. so you can go back and take a look at those. So now you're going to glue those, Janice, right? right. I'm going to glue this. Do you want what, before I uh, continue, are you going to talk about yeah. the wire wrapping? Yeah, and I was going to say, while you have that glue open, okay. I'm going to have you pass it over. Because one okay. of the things about these tassels, you guys, we're going to start with these tassels. One of the things I do with these tassels before we ever take them off of our thread, the mother, the, the mother mothership, thread, right? Yeah, the mothership. I want to make sure. Let me put on my glasses so I can see. There we go. Oh my gosh, that's good. And because it's on this side, the way that these tassels are made, they're knotted. The little tassel binding um, thread that binds all the tassels together. Um, has a uh, has a little knot there, and so I want to come in with my hypo cement, and I just want to place a little dot of the hypo cement right on that knot. And what I like to do is I like to do them all at the same time when they're on the thing. So oh, they're that's done. A great idea. I never yeah. thought of that. So they're done and <laughs> done. well, you know. I'm a pretty I'm a clever girl. Literally. You know. It never occurred to so me. So you do can that. see when I cut them apart and I use them, this one has been has been glued already. Now we are gonna bind, let me show you, it might be a little bit easier to see with this earring. You can see I've come in and wire wrapped over the top of this little um, binding thread around the tassel. It really makes these tassels nice and stable and I love the way that the wire adds a nice metal look to this tassel. One of the other things I wanted to show you with this earring, I have a little wet kind of damp paper towel. Sometimes these tassels can get a little fly away. So what I do with my damp paper towel is I just come in and I slightly wet 
this tassel <laughs> to tame it just mm -hmm. a little bit. Okay, and when that dries, you can see all of the little flyaways are going to be nice and nice and clear. So let me let me adorn myself with my <laughs> earring again. And Grace, shall I come around for this um, demo? So wait, before we do that, mm -hmm. Emily, our friend Emily. Hi, Emily. Um, she says that she always calls that. A schmooby, the one below the three hole bead. Oh, she calls oh. it a schmooby. <laughs> That's so funny. And Jacques says that you guys give him or her, I'm sorry, I can't tell, um, so much inspiration and thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And mm -hmm. Susan said when she learned to macrame, she used to pin it to our jeans pant leg. Oh, oh yeah. right, yes. yes. Like, like at summer camp or. Yeah. Well, when Linnea was here, she. Uh, we have a, I can't remember, Backst yeah. we, what, what was it? It was a, a, ba a backstrap, backstrap macrame. A backstrap macrame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, where yeah. you do it, it, there's a thing that, yeah. you know, women around the world and men, um, to macrame, they put a belt on yeah, and weave, right. mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it's yeah. very cool. We got a lot of, uh, That's so cool. a lot of people wanting to know about that. May I have the round nose pliers, please? Yes, slyer hog. Do you want to? Thank you. you want to try and set it yeah, up? Yeah, let's do it. Let's bring okay. it around so it's nice and tight and even. So we're going to move this around, you guys. I'm going to come around where Grace is. And we're just going to, so we're in a nice, um, because um, wire wrapping is kind of fine work. So we want to make sure that you can really see what we're doing. How does that look, Grace? That's pretty tight there. We're going to get that in. <laughs> Awesome. Bear with us while we move our camera. Okay. So what I've got here, you guys, is I've got some tools. Um, and those of you who do some wire wrapping or wire working know uh, are familiar with these tools, right? But I just want to point out this is the round nose plier, the round nose, or you also sometimes hear it called the rosary plier when it has a cutter in the middle. The round heads of this plier make the round loops of your wire wrap. We've got a chain nose. In this case, I've got a bent chain nose here. This is the tool that grabs your wire, or like your little extra pair of fingers. We've got a nice wire cutter, a flush cutter here, that's going to cut our wire uh, apart. And we've got, this is something I think that if you don't have it already in your tool arsenal, um, it's something that you really want to add. This is what we call our wire straightening plier. It's a nylon jawed plier here that you run your wire through. So let's start by, I have a little, now, uh, speaking yeah. of tassels, though. speaking of tassels, <laughs> Grace. Dee asks if you've ever tried a dryer sheet for taming the tassel. Oh, it's a good idea, Dee. I haven't, but I bet it would maybe, a dryer sheet, a dryer sheet oh, yeah. right? Like the little, um, you know, the, her static. Yeah, mm -hmm. and stuff. I bet that might work. D, let me know if it works if you try it. It's a great idea. So I've got this is 28, or sorry, 26 gauge wire here, you guys. But what I used on my earring, I used 24 here. So you can see the difference. There's a little bit of difference between. Do I have? Would you hand me that loose tassel over there, Grace? Thanks. You can see here's the 26 that's right here. Here's the 24 that's right here. So it just depends on the look, you know, that you want for these pieces. Um, but I'm going to use the 26 today. So, and so see how I had my wire kind of wrapped up here and how the end of this wire is super crunchy, right? Super crinkly. What I'm going to do here with my nylon jawed plier, the beauty of it is I just hold my wire and look at that. Look at what's happening. Can you stand? Oh, thanks, Gita. I love these earrings. I had to make them this morning because I didn't. I wasn't adorned, so they're a quick on the fly pair. So see, look at you guys. How that 26 gauge wire now is just tamed, and it also helps to work harden your wire just a little bit. But um, it's a great tool for that. So um, I know the question is, Kate, how much wire are you going to cut? Um, my design board here is about 14 inches long, so I'm going to use that as my ruler and cut about a halfway length, so I've got, I don't know, about 7 inches or so. That might be a little bit generous, but <clears throat> with the 26 gauge, it's pretty inexpensive, so um, I'm not worried about it too much. It's not too dear. 
And what I'm using, you guys, here's my well-worn little piece of, a little bit of craft wire, but this is the 26 gauge. We mark it so we know that we we have it in our um, stock to play with. Um, but it's just the craft wire. It's a silver. It's non-tarnish. Um, it's copper on the inside with a gold, uh, I'm sorry, a silver plating on the outside. So it's really a sturdy, a sturdy Faye wire. Faye loves the focal components of your earrings. Oh, thank you, Faye. Yeah, all of these you can find under, uh, in our Vintage fine co Finds collection under carved components. We have a ton of them and uh, they really are so fantastic to use. So we're gonna start. Here's my little tassel that I have not taken off of the cord. Now this, think about the cord you guys, is it's the little home of the tassel and the tassel doesn't want to leave its house until it has some place to live, like on this wire. So I'm gonna gently, is the operative word, slide the tassel and it's already been glued and dried. Slide it down to the end of my cord. I'm gonna get my wire. I'm going to slide it down just a little bit more. I'm going to get my wire ready and I'm going to slide it off and it's kind of hard to see under my fingers but I'm going to see if you can see it there. As I slide it off the cord I'm going to slide my wire in. There we go. And slide it off and slide it right in. Can we see that there? So we've made that kind of seamless little transfer okay. transfer of power from the cord to the wire okay so now <clears throat> I'm gonna go about two-thirds to one-third wire here and this short piece of wire I'm gonna kind of bring both wires up like so and it's kind of like wrapping a briolette almost but I'm gonna take this short piece of wire and make it a little bit longer so it's maybe one-third to two-thirds. <clears throat> I'm going to grab the top of my tassel and my wire. And now I have this short piece of wire here. And I'm going to bring it down. And I'm just going to wrap one little wrap below the other down where the tassel is bound together. Can we see that? Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to wind it back up in neat little rows. So I've got a little tail coming up. Can we see that? Nice and tight. Now I'm going to bring these two together just like I would for a briolette wrap. And from here on out it's pretty much just like a briolette wrap. I'm going to get my little carved component get that at the ready. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to grab my wire and this all is in the handout you guys, that little wire handout that I made for you. You can download it right on the Facebook page uh, for this broadcast. Our um, home page uh, on our website, beadshop.com. So here I'm going to just bend at that right angle. Whoops, I was being very strong with my wire. There we go. Bend it right at that right angle. I get my round nose plier. <clears throat> I'm going to come up and over. Now I've made that little loop. Now we're going to take our carved component, slide that carved component in. Now I like <clears throat> a little on my earring, you can see I've gone through three times. On the tassel that I made, I've gone through twice. And since this is 26 gauge, having it wrap through twice gives me just a little extra oomph, right? So it comes through. I could wrap through three times, four times, whatever which suited my fancy. Okay. Now I'm going to turn this to the side so you can kind of see what's going on here. This is the end of the wire that wrapped around my tassel. This is the wire that's looped through my carved component. And I've kind of pinched that in tightly. Okay. 
With this wire, I'm going to come right in, right below that carved component, and wrap one below the other. If this wire's a little loose, I can come in, I can tighten it up a little bit, and then I can continue wrapping. But see that? The 26 gauge, you guys, I think of it kind of as heavy string, almost. 26 gauge is really great for wrapping, um, you know, if you have delicate beads or you want your wraps to look really delicate. These bent chain nose, see how that bent chain nose gets right in there so I can tighten things up without having to kind of maneuver with my chain nose pliers are sometimes a little hard to deal with. Now what I can do is on my other, see on this tassel, how I've just kept wrapping. Wrap, 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 all the way down. But I could also stop right here, like again, like I did on my earring, just like that. Okay, so I'm going to stop right here. I'll come in. And I'm going to get my wire cutter. I'm going to clip, being really careful not to clip my tassel, and tuck in that little end. And I'm going to pull this one down and come in and clip. Now this is ready, nice and sturdy and really pretty, to go on my mala. Now, <clears throat> I still have a little bit of wire left, and I want to show you just how to get this if you wanted to put this on an earring. See this little piece of wire that I have? I'm just going to pass it through the top of this little carved component. And I just do this wire wrap it the same way as I did down there, just like a briolette wrap. Pull those ends in. Pull one down at an angle, up and over the top, and when I come in to wire wrap, I'm just going to make that little loop. This time, I don't need to put this loop through anything, through a carved component. I'm going to add my ear wire later. I can just come in after centering it up, hold that loop and wire wrap this little small this piece of wire, but I can do it, from the bottom of the loop to the top of the component. Oh, wire wrapping is so satisfying. Look at that. <clears throat> now I'm going to cut away the tails. I'm going to cut away this little end. I really want you to see that, so I'm going to try and get in there real close with the very tip of my cutter and clip and clip. And I'm going to use my bent chain to just poke in those little ends. Now, <clears throat> I happen to have an ear wire here. We've got some really pretty ear wires on the website. I want to show you how this opens. This loop at the bottom of the ear wire, I'm going to grab it real close up to that loop right where it opens and I'm going to lift real carefully. Slide my component on, grab it, and put it back into place. And that's just how I made my earrings this morning. Okay, and these are the ear wires. We also have these in our ear wire section right on our website. So you can create a pair of earrings or we're ready to go with our little piece for our mala. Okay. And that's how easy it is. Great. All right, JP, you ready? Yes. To, to bring this sucker home. I am. All righty. So, um, <clears throat> while Grace gets resituated, um, so I'll explain what I was doing while Kate was... That was, you make it look so easy. Just, <laughs> wire is my spirit animal, I know, Janice. it is. Wire, wire. So, where we left off, we... <laughs> when, we last, <laughs> when we last visited this mala. So, we came through, we uh, 
a lot's happened since then. But we <laughs> macrameed uh, a short section just long enough to go around our little carved pendant. Uh, Kate just showed you how to give your tassel a bath. Mm -hmm. um, a little a little neatening. It went to the beauty salon. I also just kind of run the water, <laughs> take my fingers, put it under the oh, water. And I thought just... you were going to spit. I thought no, you were... I... <laughs> said that I was going to spit. So then, <laughs> then I came back up with my needle, um, and then I started, I put an, uh, we, again, we knotted on this side. So you come up with your curled needle the mm -hmm. same way you went down, and these are the, the ends uh, that we glued mm -hmm. that we're going to cut off in a little while. But I'm, I came up here and I knotted, and then it's going to bring us back to where we started, which mm -hmm. was the, the four beads with no no knots. No holes. Mm -hmm. so, no knots. No right. knots. No, not, no holes. Not no so holes. the last bead that you put on, and in the case of this, uh, we were just making like a little hand, uh, a little hand worry beads mm -hmm. or hand mala, um, which rolls on, is that you, the last bead you put on on the finishing side, you don't put a knot after that last bead. Um, because uh, the trick is you're going to have a knot that you're going to place there, you're going to make there later. So I take off the tape, I take off that knot, and now, and this was one that you did, so the needle is really curled. I do. I am a super curler you with are the curler. needle. You're a curler, and it's not, it's, I want, I'm glad I have this to work with because. Can you see it? Can you put it down so we can see Oh, it? yeah. So can everyone see how curly. I'm a super curler. It curly it is. Um, so we can work with it. So if you end up <laughs> curling your needle like this or worse, it's not the end of the world. But what you're going to do is you take off the knot, you take off the tape, and then now I'm going to go back through this first bead. I'm going to pull the end in tight and look at what we have. We And this is not exactly in the back. It's on the side, isn't it? We have, now we have a finished mala. Now what we have to do is we have to put knots mm -hmm. In, in between. between each one of these beads, mm -hmm. and then we have to knot this mm -hmm. one again. So how tight have you gone on this, Janice? You have a little tiny bit of play for the knots? Do you no, find? You no, don't. you okay. don't leave. You, you, so you tighten it up. Yeah, okay. you tighten it. You get it nice and tight and even. And then I'm going to just, just in the event, uh, I, I, maybe a bead comes off or something, I'll put a piece of tape. Better to be safe than sorry. I should own stock and scotch. And scotch tape. Right? Okay, so now how do you do this knot? It's really, really easy. Um, I'm going to turn it around so you see it a little better. I make a loop. There's my loop. Can you see that? Um, yeah, I actually just got a question if I can interrupt. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, Melanie is wondering if we can have the Facebook Live schedule for the next month or so. She says the reason she asks is she would like to practice the projects coming up and then ask questions during the live tutorial so she can have questions to ask while she's doing it. And anyway, it was just a, a quick question. It's and a great idea. And yeah, we yeah. and Melanie, schedule. you have read our minds. Yes, yes. We do have some that are scheduled and we will be posting those on the Facebook page and maybe even on our landing page uh, on our website. Yes, let's post them tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. and we'll send it out as yes. in our newsletter as yes. well. Yeah, we do have, we're, we're scheduled through uh, March almost. Through March. As long as we can get in what we say mm. we're going to do, we, we won't change the yes. schedule. Yes, subject to... Uh, yes. A great idea, Melanie. We're, we are thinking alike. So I, I'm making a loop. This is, was the tail that we started with. I'm making a loop with my curly needle thread. I'm going <laughs> under the beads... And I want this knot to land right where my thread is. I want it to go right there. Can you see that? Does that show up? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just going to pull it tight. I'm going to separate my threads. And what do I have? It looks just like a regular knot, really. You won't be able to tell the difference. Now I'm going to take Kate's curly needle. <laughs> I like it. And probably. I'm going to uh, coax it through the next bead. So I want to pull this thread away a little bit. 
I'm bringing my needle through and as you bring it through you do not want this thread to twist because it will in fact twist and stay as an extra bulky bulge mm -hmm, right It'll so add some so uh, you want to make sure you bring it through without it twisting pull it in and then uh, it's the knot is a little bigger than all the others but you're not going to really notice and then now I'm going to go I'm going to lay this down again I'm going to make my loop I'm going to go under the beads and I want to bring this up right here so you're essentially tying an overhand an knot. An overhand knot. Yeah. Uh, right in between the two beads. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> and now I'm going to go through the next. Notice I pull the thread with this hand to make room. And then I want to make sure it's not twisted. And we checked every bead to make sure we could get the thread through mm -hmm. not only through it twice doubled but then back through mm -hmm. so that because this has happened where I go to go through the bead and, and it doesn't yeah. doesn't work you can <coughs> also use a tweezer here if you want to keep your threads from getting twisted and bringing it in this way so we have a, a, a few questions and comments mm -hmm. um, Pamela is wondering if we have the instructions for um, the size of the bracelet that you're making. Oh, we can measure that out for you, Pamela. Um, yeah. And Sue is saying that mala beads aren't usually worn, they're used for prayer. Mm -hmm. right? um, but there are instances like with chakra malas, aren't there? Like if you were to wear for a certain thing, you would wear it, the stones, if you're doing the metaphysical like you're saying, right, Janice? Right. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, people oftentimes, you know, with a mala, they keep it with, you know, their shrine at home, their mm -hmm. sacred space. There are other people um, I know who wear them under their shirts. We don't know that they're wearing them, and they keep them close, always in contact with their body. Um, but they're not, malas are not normally worn as embellishment or an adornment. Yeah, like they're a not rosary a fashion, be worn. Yeah, yeah, they're not a fashion statement. Yeah. They're, they're very personal, and so you don't... Um, but I, I wouldn't say that they're not worn. They're just not worn for fashion. No, she said aren't usually worn. Oh, they're yeah. used for prayer. Sorry right. about that. That's okay. I mean, I... I did, the, so I think we're saying that really the same thing. Um, and what was the question? I'm so old, I forgot already. Oh, just, the, it was about the, length, the size the, oh, of the, the bracelet that um, you're making. That's a good question. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, did I make it the right length? I might have made it too short. I think I made it okay. No, I think it we did, yeah. On. Yeah, yeah. We measured it. Right. So, and, and this is the kind of thing where it's on fine weight seal on. You can roll it on and off. So, um... We'll measure, you know, should we measure that yeah, now? Yeah, I've got a tape okay. measure And then I'll right here. do the last knot. Mm -hmm. And the way, you guys, <clears throat> that I... <clears throat> pardon me. There's when so we, much thread here. When we were... Oops, I've got you all I tangled know, I've in that. I too much thread, and I'm... I've got that right there. Okay, the, now I see where The I way am. that I measured, actually, when we were trying to figure out what length to make just a short little mala... So it's about seven and three quarters inches, maybe. Yeah, um, just shy of just shy of eight. Yeah, we could put the the recipe up. It will depend on primarily not your wrist, but, but the, your hand but size the, here, the hips of your mm -hmm. hand, as mm -hmm. I refer this here. Whatever mm -hmm. this is, this is mm -hmm. called your hips, your hand hips. Your hand hips. That's your hips. <laughs> your hand. <laughs> no, I didn't know I had such small yeah. hips. <laughs> oh, <no>. um, <laughs> true. Um, what I did, you guys, you to do. figure you tiny I do hips. tiny hips, the tiniest hips I've ever seen. What I did when we were figuring out, well, we didn't want to make a super long mala, we wanted to make a short one, and I thought, well, we need to figure out what how long to make it. So what I did is, I actually took this one that we had made earlier, and I wrapped it around my wrist, and I kind of pinched it like this, and I thought, well, that's about, yeah, that's going to be about... 
the right size for me to roll mm -hmm. it to roll it off and then mm -hmm. I kind of pinched it there and I rolled it off my hand and so that's what let's see if I was close when I when I did that that was about right here is where I did it yeah. and yeah that looks like it's about it's about the same size so it's a cool you know you could just measure something if you have something well, that's beaded. Well, the beauty beaded. the beauty of this design is you don't have to be exact mm -mm. because you can knot off over here. So if you start stringing some beads, I mean, if you go too long, you have to. It's going to fall off, right? Right, but but you don't have to say, oh, I need ten on that side, mm -hmm. and then I put on the pendant and the guru bead, and ten on this side. You could start over here, put on your. Uh, your, your, your pendant, your, your guru bead, bead. Mm -hmm. and then keep knotting. It's just that you have to start with four beads with no hole, mm -hmm. with no knots. Mm -hmm. We keep saying that. And then you just keep knotting until it's long mm -hmm. enough. And then your last, you have to make sure your last bead doesn't have a knot doesn't after have the it. Knot. Mm -hmm. And then you get it to the length that works for you. Um, and it also will depend on the size of the beads that you're right. using. Bigger so beads like the, are... the, this mala that we made, we made it a little more delicate, the one that we're doing today, with six millimeter beads. Right. If you had eight millimeter beads or 10 millimeter beads, they take up a little more room around right. your wrist. So then the, if it was a wrist, something for your wrist, it would need to be just right. a little bit longer. Right. But they just roll on <laughs> mm -hmm. and, um, okay, so... So what we're going to do now is we're going to end it. Yes, let's okay. end it. Let's so, end it. So we, <laughs> so we, we've gone knotting. So if I turn it around, this was the direction it was in. Um, we knotted all the way to this one. Now we're going to knot on this side, and um, I'm going to take the piece of tape off. And you can either do it two ways. You can do a square knot, right over left, left over right. Or you can do the knot that we've been doing, which is the loop. And that's why you want a little bit of extra thread. And then you just come through. I don't have a needle here, so I'm just going to do it this way. Yeah, you are. I nice. am. And then I'm going to separate my threads. Tighten it down, tighten it down. And while I was so busy, um, you know, doing this, I didn't take the time to be really careful. Can I show you, everyone, it's that we can all learn from my mistakes. Do you see this here? That little Grace, bubble a little of thread. hard to see if you bring it a little close. Okay, do you see, do you see that little bubble of thread? Mm -mm. Okay, let me... Okay, a it's like a little lump. It just looks a little bigger than every place else. That's because as I was bringing it in, I was busy chatting and chewing, and I didn't really notice that there was a little twist. So if a happens. little more care, mm -hmm. I wouldn't you know, miss that. So now what I'll do, though, I'm just going to leave it, is I will put glue... My and that's from just not have, having the thread twisted and maybe yeah, not that's it, it tight enough. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, just, mm -hmm. okay, so I'm going to put some, and I like to put a little glue out a little away from the knot. Um, and then I'll put glue over here. And I'll turn it over. And I did do glue on the macrame thread down by the pendant. Mm -hmm, just to glue it off so it wouldn't come undone. And it looks like I used a lot of glue, but you'd be surprised. It really, it really does work. It doesn't really affect the, the look of the piece. And that glue saturates into the thread. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So, and then once these are dry, I really prefer a flush cutter. Could I have the yellow yeah, you sure flush can. cutters? Yeah, um, right there. Oh, these. Uh, <laughs> these are a look for me. These are we are great for wire, but I I really like a smaller flush cutter, and I will take these. I separate. I can remove that now. I separate the thread and I cut them one at a time. I'd like you to wait at least three hours to do this, um, so the glue has time to yeah, settle. Yeah. Yeah. But I do them one at a time nice without and tight. cutting the knot. And that is going to get absorbed 
as you wear it. The thread, the little bit extra thread just curls up. You don't see it. Uh, a few questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Melanie asks that she forgot what Kate said. Is the bracelet Kate's wearing going to be featured soon on Facebook Live? And when can we view this particular <laughs> sample yeah. on the website? So we're going to be talking about <clears throat> kind of the Nicole tribute at the end of the month, I think it's the January 25th. 25th, we said, yeah. And so that's going to be the subject of that Facebook Live where we talk about the different stitches that Nicole used. And we actually have two other amazing samples yes. that are going to be there. And so that will be, yeah, the, be the start. Yeah, that will be the start of the Nicole yeah. tribute um, kickoff. But if you want to, Melanie, if you go to projects, you can scroll down and you'll see five stitch. And you will see herringbone weave, and you will see two stitch. Those are all projects that Nicole did, mm -hmm. and we're going this to is the five um, stitch piece. talk about those and mm -hmm. have some kits, I think, mm -hmm. of, of different ones. Mm -hmm. But those are the three projects. Um, mm -hmm. Does that help? Yeah, and Good. then uh, a few questions related to the mala. Yeah. Were those <laughs> called hatch, half hitch knots? Yes. Okay, so those were half hitch knots. And then... Uh, Sylvia is asking, some people use clear nail polish instead of glue. Do you have a preference or is there a difference? I would prefer the glue. In the, the old days, mm -hmm. um, you know, like the wagon train days when I first opened yeah. the shop, we, I would, always we used, used, used nail yeah, polish. Yeah. And I had a customer <laughs> who came in, uh, had pearl knotted a necklace and used knots in the end tips, and she had used pink nail polish. <laughs> And she said, you just said to use nail polish. I didn't know it had to be clear. <laughs> right. You can use clear nail mm -hmm. polish. I, I prefer the, the glue because it allows whatever thread you're using to breathe better. Um, and it dries without the shine of mm -hmm. nail polish. The thing about nail polish I think that we used for so long was that we didn't really have access to this hypo yes. cement. <laughs> and if you're using, we did have access to things like super glue. Yes. And then the thing when you use super glue with your knots, or you t glue your knots with that <clears throat> super glue, it makes that knot really stiff and the knot isn't flexible. Mm -hmm. And that super glue will run down your thread. So not only will it sit on the knot, but it'll sit inside the thread and in, fuse inside the thread. infuse the thread to your bead. So what we had found using clear nail polish was we could control where we put mm -hmm. it. It did, um, we used clear nail polish that was a little thicker, so it acted a little bit more like a glue. But when Hypo Cement came out, or when we started to have access to it in the jewelry world, in right. the bead world, with this fine tip, and it had all the properties we loved of clear nail polish, plus glue. So we right. thought, so that's why we really went to this, and that's why we recommend it. And, right. But stay away from super glue yeah, and nodding yes, uh, and gluing your sure. threads. Gita says, speaking of nail polish, you can use it on the tips of thread to make it stiffer instead yes. of yes. using a needle. Yeah, yes. that's what I do. I do yes. that a lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a great trick mm -hmm. that I remember. Oh, you didn't say I couldn't use pink nail polish. Yeah. But, so. but you're right. With super glue, especially with pearls, you go to take, you, you use the technique of cutting the knots out, you mm -hmm. want to re-knot it, and invariably there's, there's one bead, pearl yes. that the glue has fused yeah. the thread in, and it's... Sweet. And we've seen that in repairs yes. time and time yes. again. Exactly. So that was one of the reasons why clear nail polish kind of came into our world, yes. and how then we moved to this hypo cement, right. which is really great. All right. Okay. With the best of intentions. I know. And we, we were did. Going to try I know. And do it in an hour. In an hour, but we, we try. Wow. But we've got so much to share. I know. It's I know. really true. So we've got, of course, now we've come to the point in our broadcast, you guys, where more of the fun stuff happens. Um, we want to say that all of the directions for this will be online at bead, or are online at beadshop.com. You can find everything there carved components, all of this cool stuff. Um, we do have some special things for you guys, for our wonderful what? Facebook audience. What have, so what, have we, what are we giving away this week, yeah, Janice? I don't know. So in these little bags, what we've done is we've made little collections of guru beads. Mm. And what we've decided to do is give away, there it is, a little set 
a random set of three, I'm just and kidding. I have some different sets there. Um, so when you, so these, so some of you are well versed in how we do our giveaways, but I just want to explain this. You go to beadshop.com, you make an order, and in the order notes, what you need to put is, I want, give me my guru beads. <laughs> That's what we're putting. Okay, so in the order notes, and if you put in your shipping notes, you will receive um, a sampler. And those of you who are watching us live, um, we're going to honor this giveaway. Usually we do the first, first ten. 10, but we're going to make this um, go until 1 o'clock our time. Pacific time. Yeah, Pacific time. So the next hour and 10 minutes, yeah. we're going to make it easy. It's not, oh, I've got to be the first... Oh no, I'm the 11th, I don't get <laughs> I it. I didn't get it. If you yeah. do it by 1 o'clock Pacific time. Mm -hmm. In the next hour. Right. Those of you who are watching this on replay, I'm sorry yeah. that uh, we aren't offering you this. But, as a just a reminder, if you aren't a newsletter subscriber, yes. you can go right now if you're watching this on our replay. Go to our website right on the front page. Sign up for our newsletter. We do a lot of cool giveaways on the weekends. Yes. We do a lot of great... Um, um, coupons and sales. other sales and things on the weekend. And speaking of sales, Janice, we yes. do have a store-wide for our Facebook viewers. Um, we do have some great things on sale right now on the website that have great yeah. discounts to them. In but fact, we're giving the you the stones, the beautiful stones, are, uh, things, everything to work with the mala, um, the vintage finds, all of that yes. is on sale. But we do have a 10% <clears throat> store-wide for you. So after you've done all of your shopping, including items that are on sale, if you throw in into the discount code MALA10 uh, on your order, you'll get 10% off your total. And that and box is right <laughs> below the cart. It's, right below the yeah. cart. Mm -hmm. And it ends tonight. Uh, on uh, Tonight, it's January 4th, Fourth. where we are today uh, when we're doing this live. So it ends tonight, uh, Pacific time at midnight. But again, if you're watching this on a replay, sign up for our newsletter because you'll get some great, yeah. um, some great deals and discounts yeah. there. All right. Okay. Any final questions, Grace? No, Have we a, done it? A million thank yous, and oh, you guys no. are the best. And I learned so much today. And Melanie, unfortunately, is um, getting better from back surgery, so oh. she'll have to go back to work in the next month or so. So she'll she'll miss these Wednesdays. Oh. She'll, she said she'll have to take them off. Oh, oh. yeah, or just. Just watch a sneakily from your desk. Yes. Oh, we'll, we'll write a there letter. There was a quick question. Oh, yeah. um, have you ever used new super glue on a project? You know, I've been trying. It's that new glue. It's in a little white um, bottle. It's that one that we just got. Mm -hmm. I, I find that I prefer the hypo tube to the new glue. Well, I think the new glue is great for like leather mm -hmm. uh, where you really need to adhere something mm -hmm. but this is glue for thread yeah where we want the thread to breathe mm -hmm. so um, you your your glue in this case is for security it's not for stability you're not trying to keep something in place and not moving mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we want especially with a mala we want our beads and our thread to move. Yeah, to be able to be flexible. Um, so I would say mm -hmm. we've just gotten some samples of mm -hmm. that in. We're trying it to see how it works with the leather. I don't know if I'm going to jump from that to thread. Mm -hmm. We'll try it, though. Mm -hmm. We'll let you know next week, mm -hmm. okay? Have you ever used, it's the same woman, have you ever used fabric hypo cement? Yes, I mm -hmm. have. I have. And uh, that you can use that as well. Mm -hmm. It's a good pinch. It, it comes in a pink tube. Pink or purple, yeah. Something yes. like that. And then there's Aileen's, Aileen's glue, Aileen's which is a also brand. a fabric mm -hmm. glue. Which works. So you, you need to try them. If you have them, try them before you buy something new. Take up some thread out, make a knot, put some glue on it. Test it out. Look at it in a few days. Do you like it? Did it hold? And, and then let us know. Mm -hmm. You don't want a glue that's going to turn a, your thread dusty, whitish, or change the color. Um, it's just there for security. So please let us know if you find, have a glue that works. We want to hear about right. it. Right, yeah. Alrighty. All right, another Facebook in, the, in, in the bag, Janice. Okay. Okay. All righty.
All happy right, you new guys. Year. Happy New Year, and we'll see you next week. Yep. I hear tell there's going to be more wire work. There is. It's not the backbone of jewelry design, but it's not like knotting. Yes, yeah. it really is. We'll make it work. <laughs> All right. Okay. We'll see you next week, you okay. guys. Thanks bye for bye. watching.